Um, welcome to the session. Um, first up, we have Mandy Chang, and she's going to uh, tell us about quantization of deformation cluster Poisson varieties. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much, James, for the introduction, and thank you for um, Yan in inviting me to this conference and for, thank you for all the organizers for organizing this conference. It will be really fun. And as I told Yan, it would be nice. I'm still hoping we can be in person at some point. So let's see. Uh, today, as the title says, I'll talk about quantization of deformed caster for some variety. And as Yan mentioned, or um, I do not know about the audience. So we'll start with uh, defining what's mean by caster. And then the second thing we'll do, like actually in the talk you're going to see, I just tell you all the term in my title and then it's like, oh, done. And then, and then we'll talk about how to quantize, quantize uh, a quantum version of the caster algebra or caster variety. And then we'll kind of talk about how to deform a caster variety. Uh, in between when we're talking about quantum structure, we'll say how we can see a Poisson structure from the Quantum, quantum, uh, quantum version of the Custer algebra. And then at the end, we'll see how we combine this, uh, a quantum version of the deformation, and then that will deduce us a uh, Poisson structure on the quantum Custer variety. So that's it for the talk. So, uh, and by the way, this is a joint work with Bosco and Tim McGee. And then Custer algebra. Uh, Custer algebra is defined by Foreman Savinsky which uh, we'll first start with this very technical definition, but then once we'll have the example in the second page, then you'll see immediately see how those things go. Uh, so uh, to define the algebra, usually in our class, algebra class, undergrad first class, which we have um, variable generators, uh, but what cluster algebra do is we start with some subset of the variable, but then we have some exchange data. This is how we start with, and and we'll call this collection of certain subset of variable a seed. And then what this exchange data do is it will give us more variable. So start with certain initial variable, and then we'll do this mutation step that will replace one variable in this collection. I have AK here, which I switch it to AK prime. And then the the mutation or exchange process is by this formula. You can see that's why I have this skill symmetrizable matrix, which we'll talk about this later, that this is called the exchange data because this formula is dictated by this um, matrix here. And then here we'll develop this new seed, which is, I still have A1 to AN, but I replace this AK with AK prime. And then the process will go on and then we'll look at the collection of all those custom variable and then the algebra that generate from all those custom variable will be what we call the custom algebra. And we're going to call it the A custom algebra. So example, uh, we start with this uh, rank two example, two initial variable, and this is our skill symmetric matrix B. So we mutate at this uh, one position so you can see it's A1, the new variable A1 prime. And then the mutation formula is actually very easy to read. We look at row or column. Uh, so here I have one positive at this uh, second position. So I have A2 here, but nothing is uh, here. It's like nothing at um, the minus position. So I have one here. So I will call this A1 new variable as A3. And then I have this new seed will be, I replace A1 to A3 and then A3, A2. And then uh, there's uh, one more formula I didn't say, but you can check it out or do ask me, which is there's also a mutation process of the mat um, exchange matrix. In this one two case, we'll be just uh, taking transport, that, but that is not true in general. It's only true for one two cases. But then we'll get a new seed with some new variable, a new skill symmetric matrix. And then the process go on, which will now mutate at this position two, because mutation is evolutive. So when we first mutate at position one, we will not mutate at position. And then the same post procedure here, you can see the same, almost the same formula. And then we'll obtain this new variable A4, which when I put in A3 with this, 
uh, with this uh, Loren expansion, this is what we'll get. And then we'll mutate at one again. And if it's the same combinatorial, we'll get A5 as this. And A6, actually, we get back to A1. And then you can see in this example, this process stopped and we can only have finally many cluster variables. Uh, but this is not true in general. So we'll call those cluster variables with finally many variables as finite type. And, and, but, and then Foreman Sewinsky show that um, Foreman Sewinsky show that those finite type cluster variables uh, actually correspond to think and type. So um, but there's like one more question that Foreman Sewinsky asked. You can see all those cluster variables are uh, in terms of Laurent polynomial of the initial variable. Which, um, which if you think about it, it's not that trivial because you can see here at this A5, I'm actually dividing A3, which is a rational function. But from Sewinsky also show that all the custom variable can be expressed in terms of the initial variable. But they have one question, which is if the if the coefficient of the Laurent expansion is positive or non-negative, which uh, a few couple of slides later we'll talk about um, this GHKK word, then they show that the coefficient, this positivity conjecture that all the coefficients are non-negative. So um, uh, actually our, our main focus for today is not really the a cast algebra, but the x cast algebra. But they are very similar, which what we do now is we also have a seed, but now we have the variable as xi, and then we have the same um, exchange matrix. And then the only thing we switch between the is a and x structure is the mutation process switch. So you can see we have this new formula here to, to dictate the, uh, the mutation, but it's the same, which is we have some initial variable and then we do the mutation, but you can see now we switch all the xi, but then at the end is we got some x variable and then the x cast algebra are the algebra that generate by all the x cast variable and the mutation. And then as this is a mathematical physics conference, so we talk a bit about geometry. So uh, we got something called cast variety. Uh, what are they? Um, formally speaking, they are log labial variety. But the reason that it carry the term caster is a swing of regular fun functions, um, caster algebra, they carry a caster structure. Um, because um, to be more precise, you can see I put a premise here because in the caster world, there's something called upper caster algebra or middle caster algebra. So um, to be fully correct, a swing of regular function are the caster upper caster algebras. But how do we understand it? Actually, it's like it's almost a dictation from what Foreman Sewinsky defined in the algebra code. Foreman Sewinsky defined a seed as n variable. So we have, you can see it's a Laurent polynomial as n variable. And that is actually giving us a torus. And then what mutation is, we got a new variable in each step. You can see as a change of variable. Or the other way to see is we have this birational map. We see the mutation as a birational map between two torus. So what we can do is we can think this mutation map as a transition map between two tori, and then we can define the A and X cluster variety as union of all the, those torus, um, and then going under all those mutation map. But you can see here, I have some notation answer and M that I didn't define. So uh, the next, the slide after the next, we'll define that. But one thing as we say, uh, we want to talk about the Poisson structure of Castell algebra, which we'll see soon formally, but actually it's very easy to see. We have this exchange matrix, which is a skew symmetrizable matrix. What does that mean is that exists in integer di diagonal matrix such that you multiply it that this diagonal matrix is turned to be skew symmetric. And actually this skew symmetric matrix will give us a Poisson structure on the X cluster variety. It's just that. And you can see it's like very naturally that we already have a Poisson structure on the X space already. So um, as mentioned in the, I, I came up involving some notation that I didn't define. So 
this two slide is just quickly, we go over all the formal definition and notation that I'm going to use, uh, but they are basically the same thing. So um, uh, I is just like one to N, like, oh, I just suddenly cannot write, um, sorry, uh, one to N, and then we have the lattice N and then do lattice M. And then we have a skew symmetric bilinear form. And then we have this dual lattice here. And those DI are actually the DI inverse we use to turn it from skew symmetrizable. Because I hear we start with skew symmetric. So we multiply the DI to turn it into skew symmetrizable. So how we call a SIG now is just a, a set of basis vector of the lattice N. And then we can do take the do of it, and then we have a um, we have a basis of the lattice M. And then here you can see that's what I just say. The di is just I'm sorry, I just suddenly cannot write. But the di here is just turn the skew symmetric matrix into skew symmetrizable. Well, with all the notation, what I want to attain is we have this lattice N or answer that is coming from the dilation of DI. We take the, we take the spec of the Lorentz polynomial coming out of it. So, so that's how we get the torus formally independent of more form and Sivinsky defined. So, so this is how we can uh, we can uh, define the, uh, so so then here we have the torus, and then the next thing what we have is mutation. So we also have here, we have a set C S here, which coming from a basis of a late lattice or vector space. And then we can, we can mutate our basis of vector to another seat. And then you can see one seat here in our mind is actually a torus of rank n. So when we mutate to another state, we have another torus of rank n. And then, and then this mutation map, as we said before, give a birational map between the torus. So so which is written down something like that um, in terms of this um, toric monomial notation. But unfolding the language is nothing but just what we have mentioned in the first couple slides in the form of Sawinski language. So they are exactly the same thing. Uh, but one thing to say is, as I guess most people here are geometer or mathematical physicists, um, if you do not like this uh, algebra definition, the way we understand this mutation map is just something like x map to x times one plus y, something like that. And actually you can see as a bow up of toric variety, which you can kind of see like here, so let's say we have c star square. And we, and here one plus y is actually telling us the point we pull up is x equals to zero intercept y equals to minus one. So we pull up at the point zero minus one. The way it says like we have this c two, and then we have this uh, exceptional divisor, and then like these two torus are actually giving us the covering of this a variety because we need another torus to cover this exceptional divisor and the transition map between them is actually exactly this or the other dependent on how your bow-up is reduced or non-reduced. Uh, so this is how we can understand this mutation map geometrically. And then um, and then this is the same thing. So so now I can say my A, A, A and X cluster variety are union of all those tori under the mutation map. So the quantum thing you can see is the same. Um, like similarly, we begin with this uh, collection of lattice, skill symmetric form, and the C. But now when we move to quantum, we look at quantum torus. So we have this quantum torus under this relation, which is not commutative and then and then this is our uh, relation and then now this is our quantum mutation which you can see here like in the beginning what we do for the x mutation is x map to xi one plus xk to some power dk something like that but you can see here is what we do is we we add the q in this um quantum mutation relation. Um, one thing to say we'll say later is 
actually this mutation is coming from quantum dilogram. And then this relation here is when we are looking at the adjoint relation in the in this top quantum relation and we unfold the multiplication, then you can immediately see how we can obtain this quantum mutation. So it's actually very natural that coming from this um, quantum structure that we can get the quantum mutation, this formula immediately. And then um, as we mentioned in the very beginning, that's this positivity conjecture, which asking if all the custom variable can be expressed as Lorentz polynomial in a positive coefficient, uh, Lorentz polynomial with positive coefficient. So, or if we are algebraic geometry, we care about function on the variety. So what is that? I need to talk about a few combinatorial object scatting diagram, uh, which is developed for this phase basis. Uh, which what is a scatting diagram is collection of walls with certain condi condition, but here is what is a wall. A wall is a collection of two data. The first one is what we have expect. It is uh, it's a support of a wall which is a co-dimension one cone. So it contains with some uh, there's a normal vector to the support, but there's like one more information of the wall which is a function that associating to this uh, co-dimensional one cone. Again, let's understand everything by an example. Uh, this is the A2 example that actually we just, uh, the example we did. So you can see we have three wall. To each wall here, we have a function that associating to it. And you can see the function, how we have is, we have this direction on the wall, then this is a polynomial in terms of this direction. Note that this direction might or might not lie in the wall, it's on the hyperplane. So this is like the pi minus one, one here. And you can see actually how, like just by example, how this scattering diagram dictated customer structure. In the example we have, we have five variable, five seed. And that here, you can see we have five chamber here, maximum cone. The way we can see is we can associate torus to each chamber or maximum cone. And then uh, we are going to see we have the wall crossing that is actually mutation that will give us the birational map or the mutation map we are seeing. So, so we advertise if we have a wall, we'll cross the wall. And what does a causing a wall mean? Which is a path that passing a wall D, and then that define an automorphism of the polynomial or monomial, which we map the monomial to the monomial itself and multiply the function up to some power. Again, let's do it by an example. We call this wall. And then we have this monomial here, and then we have this, we keep this monomial, we time this wall function up to some power that it's just in the product of the normal and this monomial. So we got a one here. So we got one plus a, a one divided by a two. And you can see this is exactly what we had in our example when we were defining this a three, um, a three, a four here. So you can see this wall crossing, like if we are custom algebra people, it is nothing but just the custom mutation. So I'm muffling a bit slow, hope I'm speed up. Do let me know if I'm going too quick. And like we said, what we care is about functions, beta function. The most interesting example is we look at torus, two dimensional torus, and the function on it are just polynomial that is coming from linear combination of monomial. So those are the monomial, this like the, the vector space of monomial will generate all the polynomial in two variable. And you can see here the monomial are actually dictated by a set to lattice. So this is the same thing we have thinking for theta function, which is to this each lattice point on the scatting diagram, we associate theta function to it, which is defined by some, again, some other combinatorial object called book nine with initial slope of this uh, lattice point and some end point Q. And maybe let me, I can speed up a bit in this example, not too much. You can see those are the two broken lines we have. We have this initial slope minus one zero. Note that here I go in positive direct opposite direction. So in going this way, and I choose this is as my endpoint Q. I can choose not bending or bend. 
the bending only when we pass a wall, and the bending is actually coming from the wall coefficient. We just come here, and more faithful calculation of all those spoken lines and stare at the final monomial. So you can see this is what I sum up. So this is my favorite function associated to the lattice or formerly tropical point minus one zero. Um, so, okay, here we talk about the generation of custard variety. As we say, we have two custard variety. We have the A custard variety and X one. And the A, A one complexified by this polytope porch construction. And um, you can see um, the A, the A custard variety actually, as we said before, uh, the custard variety is very close to tor, it's full of tor variety. So that's like, that's like this. If I were another top, I usually do this dictation between toric and caster. The sketching diagram you can think as is a fan structure, and all those um, you see monomial. We can think of it as theta function toric monomial. So uh, in toric geometry, we have this porch construction that we coming from a polytope. We can define a projective toric variety. So similarly, um, we can define the Complexification of a custom variety by uh, by using a polytope, and the other word I have with Tim and Alfredo on the general surface is we can describe this polytope using this Bokenite convexity idea that we can entirely describe the polytope structure using this. Um, so the actually the way to see it is I feel like I'm speaking too much. It's like we have straight line, but in scanning diagram we have broken line, so we just turn line into broken line. And then we just show like uh, this gives us the compatibility. But of today's interest, we we care about the X case. It compatible with the fan construction. You can see what we are doing here is actually we just want to translate what we have in the toric world to the custom world. So as we said, like the sketching diagram is really look like a fan to me. So we try to use the fan to partially compatibly the X custom variety and. Okay, uh, uh, one thing is uh, why we care the A and X cluster variety, as this is a, a, again a mathematical physics. So, the idea behind is we are thinking mirror symmetry. Uh, the hope or the goal is this A and X cluster variety, or uh, with Nan and still a mirror due to this app. Uh, to each other. So you can see what I'm doing with my collaborator is we try to construct this toric de degeneration, kind of modifying, not exactly, but we want to do this SYC picture. We have two toric vibration, and then and then what we are thinking. So you can see the central fiber uh custard do uh like uh like uh actually do to each other. And then what we are hoping is this, yeah, this will give us a mirror symmetry picture. So this is the idea behind. Uh, let me roughly talk about the compatibility of the type A2 case we compatibly. As uh, HKK, Ghost Hopkins Q consideration always tell me, tell us that this is the special service of degree five. And the B2 case is DP6. And the G2 case is uh, the polytope we are going to get this is something interesting. We've got something non-integral pole, which is not something common in the maybe in the toric world. But actually, uh, with Bosinger making a general survey, what we have is like we show actually it follows immediately already the Newton O'Connor body are uh, those broken like convex polytope. So uh, in the case of Wasmanian, people already commute that exists this um rational vertex in the Newton of corner body. And what we show is we should switch the definition of Newton of corner body to be broken like convex in instead of taking the convex hole of the variation of the section of line bundle. So and then there we, we cover what we have uh, for this Newton of corner body picture but without taking closure. So what we are claiming is this broken like convexity is a it should be a more natural definition in this polytope world. Uh, but anyway, we focus on positron structure in this talk. So the X family. Uh, so this is uh, my collaborator, uh, Lara Bosinger, Bosco, Ferris, Melanie, T. McGee, Alfredo, Legendary, Surface, which what they show is they give a 
extremely authority generation of the X customer right in this way, you can see it's still almost exactly as the as the X mutation, but they add this parameter here. The way to say, as we said, like the X family, we are kind of thinking it as compulsively compatible from the fan picture. So we look at each maximal cone and the kind of the dual cone of it. And then we take the um, each alpha and piece um, of each maximal cone and then we glue it together by this new mutation map in this X family. So this is how the family, uh, the X family is defined. And then the question, uh, when we were talking, what they ask is like, in this Poisson structure, uh, in the X family, we got a Poisson structure. So do their family also carry a Poisson structure as well? So that is how we start with this project. So, so what we do is like, um, what we do is like we say the scattering diagram, the wall crossing mutation are actually coming from dialogism and quantum dialogism. So we had that and look at those things. So um, the wall crossing is like, so, so we look at how we define this quantum dialogism, which is coming from this map. So it's a bit small, but I, my latest just cannot fit, but you can see it's again, basically the same quantum quantum mutation what we have. So what we do is we just translate everything into this quantum uh, scattering diagram language and we define the quantum scattering diagram and we do the same construction as squash hawking q sandwich and define the quantum uh, phase function, quantum booker line and all those things. Like JHKK show the positivity of phase function, but actually it fell for this quantum phase Function quantum setup. So, with Bosco and team, what we do is we explicitly find a kind of example of this positively conjecture in the quantum case for the theta basis. So, uh, what we do is we move on. We so we say we want to translate everything into the X family. So, what we have is now we have this quantum version of the X family is coming from like that. You can see it's still almost the same thing, but we have this um, uh, this uh, quantum mutation parameter here. So we define this uh, quantized X family deformation X family in this way, which we grew the outline patches. You can see it's again, similarly, we have this in the, we have the torus, we grew the top, um, we grew the, we, we go to torus by mutation. So now we have is we have quantum torus or actually here is quantum alpha and patches. And then, and then we go it by this quantum mutation map. Uh, and then the last you can see is form, formally the quantum, the Poisson structure will follow because here in the ordinary case, once we have the quantum structure, we have the skew symmetric form, we have the Poisson structure. So what we do, you can see at the end is we show everything com commute. I mean, like the commutative diagram commute, which is the this quantum structure, Poisson structure commute with the mutation map. So we have this family coming from this union of all those quantum torus um, going by the quantum mutation map. And then here we have this um, quantum structure that leads us to the Poisson structure. And then we just kind of repeat the same calculation here, which then, sorry, I know, I'm, I, I hope I'm not running too much out of time. So we just, you can see here, it's like all the calculation, but all I want to say is we have this, um, quantum structure on the X family, we want to show it come with the mutation map and here are the calculation. So, so then that follows that in our deformed quantum X family, we also carry a Poisson structure. So, so this is what we have like as a result, which is uh, we have this partially compatible of the quantum X Custom variety, uh, and then we have this Poisson structure of the of the scheme, the variety, which is 
coming, still coming from this skill symmetric form we start with. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Mindy, for this very pretty talk. Thank you. Um, and making my life easy. Nice long time. So uh, are there any questions? While people are having a think, I have a very naive question for you. Okay. So one thing physicists like to do is big, build big classes of things to go mining in. them. And you were talking about how this is sort of related to the toric, toric world. So is there an efficient is there an efficient mechanism here to classify to to produce large classes of geometries that you could then you could yeah that's what that's what we are hoping because um yeah. the one thing i'm trying to do with my collaborator we all are you know like real symmetry everything are so well developed in the toric case and you can see what we are doing is we are not doing too much we just want to generalize all we have in the toric world to the custom world like um, I, it, it it cannot see too much because I because I feel like physicists care about Poisson geometry. That's why I choose this topic. Mm -hmm. But my the other topic I'm doing is this polytope thing. It's like entirely we have this idea from the topic. Well, the polytope construction, how we do it in the um uh in the custom world. It's like it's like this thing of like scaling diagram and then. This is actually like how my friend come up with this X family. Because the thing is, we have scaling diagram which associate a function to the wall. But if you think about if you forget the function or you put the function as one, mm -hmm. that is actually a toric thing. Right. And then right. actually, if we're doing this wall closing, as we say, it's actually the one plus X, the wall function is actually talking a ball up of toric variety. Mm. Right. So this is like this is like very naive idea. So we just turn this toric thing as the ball up. Because right. each if we don't see the function as trivial, then mm. we are actually seeing some ball up of toric variety. So how we can go with that and work with mm. it? Like I have this uh also another word which is not mentioned in this um in this talk is um, this book and I are actually uh, theoretically, um, like, I don't know the correct English, like, analogous <laughs> of this mass law index to this holomorphic disk. Uh, not exactly. And I was working with the synthetic geometry, which, because again, they know a lot in the toric world. So you can see, like, this is not even very general ball of toric variety right it's like very explicit the mutation map we mutate at the zero locus of the mutation map so so this this ball of if we know how to do toric can we do ball of toric variety and then how do things go so mm. i don't know at least yeah. this is what i'm trying to do like yeah cool. with my partner right now yeah speaking of my 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 own um uh, uh, uh preferences I always like it when there's a chance of building large classes things so that's cool are there any other questions for men so if not let's thank Mandy again